When working with sound, there are really just three things that you have to work with. One is the frequency, that's the tonality of the sound, that's how close together the waveforms are. Another is the amplitude, which is, if you like, if the surface of a speaker were beating the air, it's how far the speaker moves, how, how much compression it creates when it bounces the air molecules until they ultimately hit your ear and make it resonate. And the other one is phase, is the precise timing with which the surface of that speaker moves. Those three are pretty much all you've got. It's not as flexible as working with visuals where you've got three channels and multiple patterns that you can recognize. Even if you've never worked with audio, you probably recognize this waveform display. And this is a piece of audio that has two channels, and you can see on the far right of the waveform display, I've got a left channel and a right channel. Now, this standard of having a left and a right channel is only really meaningful for our ears. It's only really meaningful for us because we have a left and a right ear. But in terms of the technology, what we're really working with is channel one and channel two. It just happens to be the case that everybody agrees channel one will be recorded from the left and played back on the left and vice versa for channel two and uh, the right channel. But really what we're looking at is two mono channels and the waveform display shows time moving left to right. Here I'm using a time display that is beats per minute. But in fact, if I bring up the, let me go to the window menu and bring up the time display and I'll just I'll just shrink this down a little bit. I don't need it that big. So let's put this down with the uh, selection view. If I right click on here, I can choose a different time display format for audition. At the moment, I'm using bars and beats. If I were working on a TV program, I might well choose SMPTE, a SMPT standard. This is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. If you just want to work with time, but not particularly have a frame count, frames per second, you could always just right click and choose something like decimal, which is going to give you minutes, seconds, and thousandths of a second. Now, with the waveform display, as I say, time is moving left to right, and the height of the waveform indicates the amplitude, it's the volume, and the zero point is this center line. So it's not actually the bottom of the waveform that defines the amplitude, it's the center line here. If you imagine this is the center point, and if you imagine there's a speaker moving backwards and forwards, making noise, but the speaker's perhaps on its back, so it's moving up and down rather than left to right, you get a sense of the movement that's being measured by this plot line here. This height and peaks and troughs of this waveform are showing you the loud and the quiet parts of the audio. So if I play this, there's a pretty good indication of it. So pretty quiet at the beginning. And it's quite clear it becomes louder as time moves on. But what you can't get from a waveform display is frequency information. You can't get the particular tone that's being displayed. Now you notice over on the right here, I've got infinity as the zero point. That means quieter than the system has the capacity to play back. So it's below the level at which the system could differentiate between the signal, which is the noise that you want, and the background sound, the background noise, which could be the hiss in the wires or, or even some background noise on location. And at the very top of the list, although it's not displayed on here, the top and bottom, I should say, we've got zero dB, which is counterintuitive if you're not used to working in the decibel scale, which is commonly used for audio measurement. Zero dB means the loudest that it can possibly be, the loudest signal that the technology you're using has the capacity to record and recreate. So it's a zero point because it can't go any louder than that. And you always work in negatives, in minuses. So you'll notice this is minus three, minus six, minus nine, and so on. And you'll notice this is a logarithmic scale, so it doesn't increase at even intervals. It increases the drop as it moves down towards infinity and zero. So again, this center line is our zero point, and we're counting decibels up towards zero dB. If your peaks go over the zero dB mark, then they're gonna burn out and they're just gonna sound awful. There are some tools in Audition to fix that, but if at all possible, err on the side of recording things too quietly, you can always make them louder later, but if they're too loud, you're kind of stuffed. Now, at the bottom of this panel, I've got some playback controls, 
play, fast forward, and, and I can jump between uh, sections and so on. I've also got some zoom controls, and uh, they're all pretty self-explanatory if you if you hover over them and play with them. But I've also got a grab handle, and if I drag this up, I'm going to get a different display of my audio. And I'll just keep a little bit of the waveform on so you can see it. This is the spectral display, which is one of the main reasons, or let's say one of the core reasons, that people love Adobe Audition. The spectral display shows time left to right just the same as a waveform, but the vertical axis is no longer showing amplitude, it's now showing frequency with low notes at the bottom and high notes at the top. Remember we're still seeing a channel 1 and a channel 2 here, a left and a right channel. So if this was a mono audio clip we'd just be getting one set of information. Because the vertical axis is showing frequency information, I've got a visual indication of the particular frequencies that are used in this audio. Amplitude, the volume of the signal, is indicated by the brightness of the dots. Now I'm just going to hover the mouse over the time ruler at the top here and I'm going to scroll with my mouse wheel. This is going to allow me to zoom in. You can see the navigator changing to reflect this. And if I play this, you can see, I'll just come out one step here, you can see exactly what's going on with the audio as it plays. So I think it's pretty clear you've got this indication based on brightness showing you the amplitude and we can see very clearly that when that chord kicks in, well the waveform gets bigger, you can still see it a little bit at the top there, but also you get a whole bunch more light in the low frequencies. You'll notice that speech is most of the power of uh, when people are speaking is between about 300 hertz and maybe, well, maybe a thousand hertz. You've got your sibilance and your detail. The power is about 300 to 500 hertz. And hertz is just the name of the measurement system that measures how many times per second. It cycles per second. So one kilohertz is 1,000 times per second. And that's the frequency where a lot of the detail in speech is. Audition CS6 has an additional spectral display. This is the spectral pitch display. And you'll notice it's fundamentally the same, except that over on the right, I've got notes here rather than hertz measurements. And this blue line indicates an estimation on the part of Audition for the core note that's being used. You can see there's a transition here very quickly from a low note to a high note. And as this plays, you can see the, the key, if you like, that Audition thinks the note is being played in. So it's particularly useful if you're working with the manual or automatic pitch correction and uh, I guess that's why it was developed and included with Audition CS6. But in the main you're probably going to work with this regular spectral frequency display. This is where you can use the Photoshop style tools along the top to pick out audio that you don't want and remove it or adjust the volume for it. So that's a quick comparison between the waveform display and the spectral display in Audition CS6.